thanks for stopping by. And to those of you that subscribe to my channel, thanks for sticking with me, following me, and stopping by for this kind of deviation from what I normally do. I just finished completing 15 altered composition books in an altered composition notebook playlist. And I'm kind of staring at a blank canvas here. I'm not sure what I want to do next or which direction I want to go in, what I should work on, and I have kind of been bouncing all over the place and not really knowing what to do. So I think we've all been there and all have had that kind of block or feeling of funk. So I signed up for some classes. I'm taking Fodder School 1, and I also signed up for a class from Willowing Arts. And I'm enjoying both of those classes. I can't record them, but I will share with you my finished projects when I finish them. So for now, I decided to shop my garage or my own discarded items and figure out something that I could do that would break, break my block. So my name is Peg. Welcome to my channel. I call it Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I really enjoy the creation of journals. I like to write. I like to document my life in that way, that diary type of way. I'm playing with encaustic wax and getting into that a bit. And there's a lot of other things from bookmaking to altar playing cards to ATCs on my channel. So if you like someone that kind of wanders around into everything that she runs across, subscribe and join me. But for today, I had these three fish in a box in my garage that I had used in my home when we lived in Florida, and they just don't really fit my motif for what I'm doing now. So I decided to alter them and make them look more like a restoration hardware type of product. So I started with some plaster of Paris. I'm adding some glue to that to create more of a Venetian type plaster. And I'll mix that up with some water until I get it to the consistency that I think will be workable. I'm going to put on some plastic gloves to protect my hands or to keep the plaster of Paris from sitting up on my hands and giving me um, concrete block hands. And we'll add the water and stir that up until that consistency is about what I want to work with. And the plaster of Paris you can pick up at at any big box store like a Walmart, a Home Depot, a Lowe's here in the U.S. All of those places have it. It's very inexpensive, and it comes in this milk carton-looking container that um, you know stores pretty easily. And there's a lot of different things that you can use it for in, in mixed media. So I did a altered composition book with this product and this mixture. So you might want to check that out. If you decide to mix them up, you can get a two for one out of this, you know, find, find something. And I do plan on doing this with my flower pots. On, on my deck this summer. So I, I have quite a bit of it in stock. So I'm, I'm working with it pretty furiously. So I'm just smearing this on, smearing, smearing, spreading, glopping this onto the fish. And as I put it on, I'm taking my hand and kind of smoothing over the top of it. And then I go back and tap it to give it a little bit of texture. There's quite a bit of texture on this wooden fish anyway. I don't want to lose that, but I do want to add some additional texture with this plaster of Paris mixture. And I will just get this fish completely covered. I will cover the other two fish and, and we'll let that set up and dry. And I will tell you, um, forewarning, it sets up fast. I set this, covered all three of my fish, set them aside to dry and thought, yeah, now would be a good time to go have a bite of lunch. So I left my garage studio here and went over to the house, 
had a bit of lunch with my husband and came back and the plaster of Paris was like a solid brick inside that container. So it does set up very, very fast. Once I have all of these covered, or this is this little fish is just about complete, I'm going to finish the other two and allow those to dry and now come back and cover them with some paint. So I have raw umber mixed in a little dish here. I put a squirt of paint and a couple of squirts of water to really dilute that. And I want to just dry brush that raw umber onto each of these fish. So you can see me dipping my paintbrush into the paint and then wiping it off on my catch paper to remove it and then dry brushing right over the top of that to capture the texture in not only the fish, but also in that plaster of Paris. So I will do that on each one of these three fishes. It's drying very, very fast, but I do want to allow that to dry. I'm coating the bottom of each with a solid brown, so it gives that kind of shadow underneath and, and gives that solid color base. And once I get the raw umber dry brushed over and it has dried, I'm going to come back in with this bronze metallic paint. And I'm going to speed this up because it's the same process. I'm just going to go over the top and dry brush that bronze metallic to get that hint of iridescence and that hint of glimmer into these little fish with a very subtle um, catch of the metallic. And that pretty much completes this project. It's a quick and easy way to recycle something that you have that you aren't using anymore and want to give it a freshen up. I think this gives that, that Pier 1 import or restoration hardware um, type of look to it. And I have put it in my guest bathroom and they actually have found a nice home there. So this is the completed look at these three little fishies. And I think they turned out pretty nice. So we'll see what else we can complete with the plaster of Paris. I think it um, kind of gives a nice look. If you want to check out what I did with the altered composition notebook with this plaster of Paris, you can find that playlist right here and just kind of scroll through that until you see the one that um, says plaster of Paris on it and you can see how I utilized it in a notebook. So thank you again for being here and I will say bye for now.